So I'm Jamie Pemberton, I'm a Principal Structural Engineer at Form Structural Design. So my role as a Principal Engineer is I, I'm generally like the day-to-day -day contacts on my project, so architects, clients, contractors will come to me in the first instance. Um, I'm also then responsible internally for managing uh, other engineers and technicians working on the project. Uh, so that involves ensuring they've got the right, doing the right work, checking their work, checking the drawings. Um, also, I still get involved in doing the calculations as well. Um, just, and then I'm also in, in charge of internal management of the project. So financial stuff, checking we're you know, invoicing the correct amount each month, checking we're getting paid, checking we've not overspent our budgets. Um, and also involved in planning the project. So that will be the start of a project, looking at our budget for the project, understanding how much time each member of the team has spent on the project, so we're still within budget, and sort of managing that throughout the project as well. So we are a sort of a consultancy of structure engineers. So we yeah, uh, work on a sort of range of projects, sort of residential, uh, commercial uh, buildings, mainly focused in London. Um, we've done a lot of private residential schemes in sort of big posh houses, but we've now sort of moving into other types of buildings. So we're doing high-rise student accommodation blocks for universities. We're also doing um, some refurbishment projects on existing buildings as well. Uh, we're based in London, there are about 20 people in the office currently. So typically I get into the office, I think first thing is checking emails, checking if there's any urgent queries I've come in from contractors or architects. Um, once that's done, it's probably discussing with my team, uh, so junior engineers and Revit technicians, about what we're trying to achieve that day. So sit down, have a little look for our projects, what drawings we've got to get out by the end of the day. And once that's done, it's getting into the actual sort of work. So it would be a range of things. So it would be structural calculations, uh, so sort of crunching numbers or uh, reviewing drawings, uh, coordinate, coordination with architects and M&E engineers. It's quite a key one as well, making sure we've all got the right information. Uh, and then, yeah, and then uh, writing reports occasionally as well, and sometimes also going out to site doing site inspections, which is quite nice to get out of the office and yeah, go and see stuff being built. Uh, I was always strongest at, at, at maths and physics during school and college. Um, I did yeah, maths and physics at A level, and then I was trying to find a, a career that suited that. Um, Engineering stood out to me because obviously focus on those two subjects, but also has things like you know, not being office-based 24/7. You know, you do get out site visits, which I want to something with. You know, get outside a bit. Uh, also, I enjoyed working part of a team, so we do you know work at internal teams with other engineers, technicians, but also working externally. So you're working in a team with architects, clients, contractors to deliver projects as well. I think I enjoy yeah, collaborate, collaborating with other uh, design team members. Um, I also quite enjoy actually seeing something physically physical being built. So going to see a, you know looking at a building that I've designed is quite rewarding. I find as well. I've got a couple of projects on site currently. So the main one is a new student residential uh, tower block down at Elephant Castle, South London. So it's a 15-storey building uh, with two levels of sub-basement as well. Um, so that's an RC reinforced flat slab frame and it's currently being built at the minute on site with the basement excavation being done. Uh, so that was, yeah, I was a project engineer on that one, so design, responsible for design, also overseeing design, delivery of drawings, um, and that's being progressed currently. I'm also just finished on a project in Knightsbridge in London, which was a redevelopment of a private residential property into some flats where we had to, uh, it's a terraced house effectively, where we dug a new basement underneath, demolished all the internal structure, retained the existing facade, which was a listed facade, and then we built up inside of it a new uh, reinforced concrete frame inside of flats. Uh, we generally get involved some projects at planning stage, so that obviously elongates the program, so planning can take six to 12 months to obtain permission. Once that's been, we then start the sort of technical design phase, which again can take another six months, and then construction overall can take anything between 12 months and 18 months, depending on the project. Uh, the engineering stuff on construction actually finishes first, because we're on site first, so that we sort of 
generally will stop our involvement for about six months left maybe on the project. So yeah, it can last up to two years working on the same project. <laughs> We have regular design team meetings and workshops, uh, so that's either in-person meetings or uh, online through Teams or Zoom, which are every week or two weeks depending on the project. So at those calls we discuss um, design items with the architects, uh, we can also run through you know, overall project status with contractors, um, it's quite a good way to chat to them and run through, uh, you know, discuss items and try and do the final coordination. Uh, a lot of other times it's picking up the phone, some phone call with them, which is quite often done, and obviously then emails, so you send through like a sketch proposal to an architect via email and then sort of follow up with a phone call, but it's a very, yeah, day to, every day we're speaking to architects, contractors on projects um, to try and coordinate the design. In my bachelor's degree, I definitely enjoyed the structural behaviours uh, module, which was kind of the main uh, main reason I've gone structural engineering now, because I really enjoyed that. Basically, we went through looking at the sort of technical theory about how a structure behaves under loading conditions, so it got quite technical and in-depth, but it, was, it gives you a really good understanding of how a, a building actually works structurally, which has really helped me in my career moving forward. Uh, so after graduating, I got a job as a graduate engineer at a consultancy in London. Uh, I joined as a quite fresh graduate, so I was working very closely with a sort of senior engineer, working with projects with them. Um, who, they were supervising my work quite a lot, so giving me day-to-day -day tasks, checking on my work. But obviously, I was gaining experience through that time, and as the sort of, as the sort of time progressed, I became more responsible for certain elements of my work. Uh, at this point, I also decided to do a postgraduate master's degree. Uh, I was looking to obtain chartership at the Institution of Structural Engineers and I had to obtain the further education module which involved doing a master's course so at that point I decided to do that as well. Uh, it's, I would advise uh, looking to do A-levels in maths and physics because uh, that's a key uh, sort of principles you'll learn. Engineering is all maths and physics based. Uh, if you've got any interest in any sort of construction industry as well, it's definitely a degree I would think about doing. Because um, once you get into civil engineering it's quite a broad subject as well, so you're not, it's not too narrow, so you've still got lots of options open once you graduate as well. So there's not only civil engineering, there's geotechnical engineering, there's structural engineering. Uh, so there's a lot of options once you've finished as well.